All right, Joe here. Welcome back to We Need to Talk. This is, of course, the show that looks at football on the internet over the past seven days. The seven days that seen Petr Cech get his first man of the match since about 2004. Danny Mills absolutely destroy Manchester United with his combined 11. Man United are halfway down the table. It's exactly where Manchester United don't want to be, but it's it just goes to show the golf between the two. And Zinchenko go nuts when Ukraine qualified for the Euros. <laughs> anyway, this week we need to talk about Meza Ozil. He may have only played 71 minutes, 71 minutes of football in all competitions so far this season for Arsenal. But I think we can all agree that Meza Urza remains one of the most talented and definitely one of the most talked about stars at Arsenal Football Club. But where is he? Why isn't he playing? Is it because Seja Kalasinat kicked the sh** out of some random gangster? Does he actually like Unai Emery? And is he going to leave the club in January? Those are all the sorts of questions that Arsenal fans and football fans in general, to be fair, have been asking so far this season. And well, Meza Ozil has answered them all in a pretty amazing blockbuster interview with The Athletic and The Athletic's David Ornstein, a.k.a. The Ornacle, a.k.a. The Meme Machine of Arsenal. So let's get straight into what Meza Ozil had to say, and there's no messing about here whatsoever. He doesn't skirt the exit question, which I think loads of Arsenal fans have been asking. Of course, he is earning £350,000 to sit in the reserve team at the moment. So is he going to leave in January? Is he going to leave next summer? Meza Ozil says no. He says, I have a contract until the summer of 2021, and I will be staying until then. So... Pretty punchy. He goes on to say, you can go through difficult times like this, but that is no reason to run away and I'm not going to do so. I'm here until at least 2021, which I think is a pretty punchy statement given that there's been a lot of links away from the club last summer, there will be again in January, and I'm sure next summer. So for a minimum of another two years, Meza Ozil has said he will be an Arsenal player. Despite this, Behind the scenes, there have clearly been some issues because he isn't playing any football. And one accusation levelled at Meza Ozil and Unai Emery is that the two just don't get on, which is fair enough. And Meza Ozil, again, very open, very honest, says, we might not see eye to eye on everything, but that's normal. It's life and it's the same with my family and friends. You have to accept it and go forward. Clearly, there's been a little bit of a breakdown behind the scenes in the relationship and it's not helped, is it? When Raul Salenhi, again, you know what I'm like with pronunciation, useless, said a couple of weeks ago, 24-7 Meza Ozil has to work to get a recall. Unai Emery also came out on Sky Sports and said this. To decide with the, the, the best player for each match and uh, the best player in the squad for for. Uh, to play and to help us and when I decided he's in the, in the squad is because I think the another player deserves more. And this has left Arsenal fans at home, I think it's fair to say, pretty frustrated that their most expensive player, their star player, isn't getting any game time. And Meza, he ain't happy about it either. He said, not being involved, watching from home makes me feel helpless. I'm not training all the time just for the sake of it. I am ready to play. So there he is, kind of saying to Unai Emery and to Raul, saying, look, you are chatting rubbish about me behind the scenes. I am raring to go, I'm fit, I've got no injury problems, I want to be playing in this team. It's a pretty punchy statement. Now, some of the people at home will be saying, you know, his lack of game time might be because he's not in the right mental state following that incredible moped robbery that was attempted on him, his wife, and Say Kalazanak. Do you want some? I'll give it yeah. Now, in the article, Meza Ozil goes on to list some pretty crazy details about that attack, saying that he had to save his wife when they pulled the door open, that Kalazanak got out when they were fighting with knives. He said that the robbers fought back with bricks and chased them all the way down the road before trying to get in the car again. And understandably, that would have shaken anyone. But to Meza Ozil's credit, at no stage in this article does he use it as an excuse for not playing 
this season. In fact, he says, it was a bad couple of weeks, but never made me want to leave London permanently. Now, even for my wife, everything is okay. There he is. Again, reiterating the fact he's going to be at Arsenal until 2021 at a minimum. So for everybody at home saying Arsenal needs to leave, that he will leave, he's going nowhere. The next bit, though, of this article is the bit that I found most interesting. How he believes he is being made a scapegoat at Arsenal. Now, listen to some of these quotes. If we don't do well in a big game, it's always my fault. If that's true, how do you explain our results in the big games when I wasn't involved? Totally valid point. Arsenal fans, what's your comeback? Have you got a comeback to what Mesut Ozil says there? If you have, let me know in the comments below. He also says, I'm not the only player in the team and don't forget, some of our opponents are simply better than us. Definitely true. Also, what is a big or a small game? They don't exist in the Premier League. I get really frustrated when I miss any game through illness and people question if it is genuine. I am always available unless it is impossible. Meza Ozil there, I think it's fair to say fighting back against the press the media, and against the likes of AFTV, who seem to religiously slate him for missing games and not being fit. He pissed me off, blood. He can piss me the f off, blood, about we got Ozil. Stop singing that song. Now, as you can probably tell from the quotes so far, this interview is very long. He goes on to talk about being racially abused for the German national team and a host of other topics. It's well worth a read of the entire article if you haven't already got a subscription to The Athletic. Anyway, Mesut Ozil finishes the interview by saying, if and when I get the opportunity, I will show my ability again. And I have to say, fair play to Mesut Ozil for being so bloody honest in this interview. Battling back against Arsenal fans, battling back against Unai Emery, stating he's going nowhere and not placing any blame on that moped attack. I have to say, I take my hat off and I respect him. But what do you guys think about this interview with Meza Ozil? Arsenal fans, if you were to respond to him, what would you say? Let us know in the comments below. And do you believe him? Is he still going to be at Arsenal next summer? You can vote in the i button right now. Moving on to the good, the bad and the ugly. The good this week is all about Marcus Rashford, who has launched a new charitable campaign called Christmas Box, in which he plans to help the homeless population around Manchester. We've seen similar footballers like Vincent Company do similar stuff for the Manchester homeless population. It's just a great gesture from a young English Manchester United footballer. I'm delighted to see it. Well done, Marcus. The bad this week is all about Callum Dyson. Now, you probably haven't heard of him, but he's a young footballer, just 23 years of age. He went from Everton to Plymouth Argyle, but at just 23 this week, he's been forced to retire from football due to a serious ankle injury. It's never nice to see. We never really talk about any stories from the lower league, so I thought I'd bring Callum Dyson to the table, get his name out there, because, you know, 23 years old and having to retire. I feel really sorry for him. Unlucky Callum, I hope life turns around for you over the next few months. The ugly this week, Bulgarian football. Don't even need to talk about it. Enough said. State of it. So that's it for this week's episode of We Need to Talk. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, let me know in the comments below. If you want more serious football chat, head over to EFD. They're doing Continental Club talking about European football's biggest topics. Also, make sure you tune in on Sunday to the Football Social Manchester United versus Liverpool. I can't wait for that one. Uh, yeah, anyway, thanks very much for watching. Auf Wiedersehen.